Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So, a lot of us started university or school or whatever, and I also started university, and I feel like I have no time to do literally anything else. And that's because there are so many fucking assignments. Well, in this video, I'll be sharing 9 websites or apps that can help you as a student. Don't worry, they're actually functional, they're not just, like, um, pretty and shit, they're, they really work. Like, yeah, they actually work. Alright, let's get started with the video. Alright, so the first app we have is Milanote, and they are sponsoring today's segment of the video. Now, before before you say anything, I generally, generally, and I'm saying this with my heart, I really like Milanote. When I started using it, I thought it was pretty cool. So essentially what Milanote is, is it's a sort of tool to organize your ideas for projects into these visual boards. So you can do things like writing notes, or you can put like a to-do list, or you can put like images, files, or you can just copy and paste texts and images or links from the website. You can even add your own photos and texts. Now, why do I find this useful? Well, when you're studying for your subjects, um, it's important to understand the broad aspects of your subject, and usually you do that with mind maps and all that. I also created stuff like work systems or YouTube or Dreamboard or whatever, and I made these kinds of pages require me to have a visual sort of representation. So yeah, I feel like Milanote is very useful, so if you want to create a free account and start using Milanote today, please use the link down below, it will really help me a lot. But yeah, it's I forgot to tell you, it's free to use, so it's really nice, and I hope you guys start using it. Alright, the next app we have, or the next website rather, is Grammarly. Now, I've never been really comfortable with using grammar websites, but after I started using Grammarly, I realized that they're the goat man. So if you open the Grammarly website and if you make an account, you can sort of start making your or you can start writing your own documents and it will automatically check the grammar on the document. When I don't know shit about a topic, I just put big words in an essay and I write pretty well to the point where my professors think that I have understood literally everything when I haven't and I just bullshitted the essay. I'm just kidding, by the way, guys, don't do that. <laughs> but even if I double check, I always end up finding grammar mistakes when I input in Grammarly, so it's pretty useful. It even has a plagiarism checker, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I recommend Grammarly. Alright, the next app we have is Notion, and you're probably sick of me saying this, but I really think Notion is a great workspace app. Now, for those who don't know, you may be asking, what the heck is Notion? And if you're watching this video without knowing what Notion is, then I am... I am utterly shocked. <laughs> If you don't know, Notion is a workspace app where you can have your own different workspaces and you can customize it to your own need and it's pretty flexible I would say. The way it works is that you have different pages where you can customize it with different blocks. So for example, you can write texts or you can put like toggles or pages or calendars, everything all there. I use Notion to manage my university and also to manage my YouTube channel and my own personal life and I still use it today. Like it's it's really an it's really a useful app after all. If you want to check out my Notion video, you can check out on the top right of the banner, whatever you call that thing. You just click on the top right thingy. Yeah, anyway. <laughs> Fourth app we have is Anki. Now, Anki is the best flashcard app in my opinion. Um, it's very, very useful in terms of memorization. What it is is that it's a flashcard app where you create flashcards and every day you have to review your flashcards in order for you to retain your information. Now I do have to say the UI isn't the most prettiest or modern. I don't really mind but it looks like Microsoft had sex with Windows Paint or something but um, it's really nice, it's really useful and it's very simple to use. Um, but it's also very, very powerful and I, I much highly prefer this over every other flashcard app. But if you do not really want to use Anki, I don't know why, um, then you may use Quizlet, the next app on this list. If you don't know what Quizlet is, it's where you can access flashcards online on their website and you can review it on your own. So it's like Anki, but I, I don't... Usually you might find a deck that's made by a person who took your course or something, which is great because you don't have to spend your own time making your own cards and instead you can just use the pre-made ones. Although I did hear about Quizlet having their service locked by a payment subscriptions model, which I have no idea, but if it is, then just use Anki, guys. Come on, it's it's really it's really much better. Moving next, we have is a chemistry app actually, and it's called Moleview. 
Now I found this a few months ago. Actually, wait, I think I found this a year ago, but what you do in this website is you input a chemical and it will show you the diagram of the chemical or it can even show you the 3D structure of the chemical, which is pretty good for visual learners and for me as well. You can even edit the structure by using the tools that you have available in the website. Overall, a pretty cool chemistry website. Next app we have is a math app and it's called Desmos and basically it's a graphing website. I think this is one of the, if not the best, graphing websites online. It's pretty useful because every time I ever had to print a graph out, I use Desmos, which is pretty useful. All you have to do is input your equations and they even have features where you can locate points on a line or where you can sort of have like parameters for your equations. Pretty cool and I really recommend it for graphing math equations. The second to last app we have is TikTok. Now, if you don't know what TikTok is, it's essentially a to-do list app where you can, yeah, you can track your to-do lists. For me, what's so great about TikTok is that you can have different lists for different to-do lists. You can have different tags, and you can have different, you know, filters. So you can sort by date, you can sort by time or title or whatever. And in each to-do list or in each to-do task, you can even open up its separate page where you can type on all of the stuff over there. It even has its own Eisenhower matrix, its own Pomodoro timer, and it even has a habit tracker. So overall, I feel like it's a very good to-do list because it has pretty much everything that I need. And I feel like it has everything that you need. And finally, the last app we have is Canva. So Canva is a website where you can make sort of graphic designs. So you can make stuff like social media graphics, present posters, documents, or any sort of graphical thing. And the reason why I recommend this, even though I hate it because as an Illustrator user, I just feel like it's unfair, but Canva is really easy. Like it's so easy to make a graphic using Canva. Like whenever you have a school project or if you have a presentation, then you can use Canva because they have so many templates. I've been using Canva for a while now and it's so easy to make good looking graphics. I'm not, it's not even sponsored, but um, I really recommend Canva if you want to make graphics like that. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. I am doing, I'm currently doing exams right now, so I don't have that much time to make more content. So yeah, I will be pumping out more content once my exams are done. And yeah, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to drink your water. I'll see you next time. Bye.